In this Final Cut Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add lightning to your footage so that you can create shots like this. There are only four steps and it's super easy to do, so let's get into it. The first step is kind of obvious, but you need to choose a suitable shot to add lightning to. It obviously won't work on a blue sky on a sunny day, but if you have some sort of moody looking clouds in the sky, you can make this effect look pretty realistic and believable. I'm going to use this shot of a boat out at sea from Artgrid, which is a great place for high quality stock footage. I'll leave a link down below if you're looking for some stock footage. This shot has already been graded to look dark and moody, probably by adding a lot of blue into the shot and darkening it. If we balance the color, we'll probably get closer to the original look before the grade. So I'll hit Command Alt B to balance the color. And yeah, that's pretty much what the original shot probably looked like. Balance color automatically tries to get a neutral balanced look and you can change it from automatic to white balance where you can select a white area of the shot to try and get a more accurate white balance. I actually like this moody blue grade that the shot had, so I'm going to remove the balance color effect. And now let's add some lightning. Next, you'll want to add a lightning bolt. You can head over to pixels.com, which has a bunch of totally free to use images and videos that you can download. I'll search for an image of lightning and I'll scroll down until I find a good looking lightning bolt. I want an image where the lightning isn't obstructed by anything and I'm specifically looking for one that has a nice dark sky behind it. So a lot of contrast. This one will do. I'll download that and let's bring that into Final Cut Pro. So I want the lightning to start right about here and I want to set the duration of this to one frame. So I can do that by hitting Ctrl D, typing one and hitting enter. That will make this lightning only one frame long. Next, I need to resize it. So I'll probably make it about 25% in this case. And I'm going to activate my transform tool and I'm going to just place it somewhere here in the sky. I'll probably rotate it just a little bit and I think somewhere there should do. I'll hit done and then what I'd like to do is just crop out all this unnecessary stuff around the lightning bolt. So I'll come over to my effects panel and I'll search for the crop and feather effect and I'll just add that to my shot. So I'll crop the width here so that'll crop both sides of this clip and I'm going to crop the height so that I can get rid of what's on the horizon here. Let me first feather this out so that I can make these adjustments once. And I think the width can come in a little bit more. And then I'm going to push the position of this crop up a little bit just so I can get rid of what's on the horizon there. I think somewhere there should do. Next, I'm going to set my blend mode from normal to add. And that will help it blend in with the sky a little bit more. You can still kind of see the square. So we can get rid of that by adding a color wheels adjustment and adjusting the midtones just to drop those little areas where you can see the square. I think we can probably drop the shadows a little bit to create a bit of contrast in that little area there. I might even desaturate this a little bit because we've got a little bit of blue in the lightning bolt and I want it to be more white. And that looks pretty good to me. Next up, you'll want to add some light into the scene. So in order to create some light around the lightning bolt in the scene here, I'm going to duplicate this clip by holding down Alt and dragging the clip up. And then I'll use the shortcut Alt and the square bracket to trim the clip to my playhead. And I'll use Ctrl D to set the duration to one. Now I'm going to brighten up the sky here using a color wheel. I'll boost the highlights quite a lot, pretty much all the way. I'll boost the mids a little bit and then I'll drop the shadows slightly just to keep that contrast. This obviously affects the whole clip and I'm going to localize this adjustment in just a second. But before I do, let's add a color curves adjustment and I'm going to boost the highlights on this adjustment here and I'm going to bring the shadows and the mids back down a little bit just to keep that contrast. Now let's make sure that these two effects only affect this area around the lightning bolt. To do that, I'll head over to my effects browser and I'll search for my draw mask. Add that to the clip and I'm going to set the viewer here to 50% so that I have a little bit of room around the frame. I'll head over to my draw mask effect and I'm going to just draw in a little shape around this lightning bolt. I think something like that should do it. So if we have a look at this draw mask, you can see it's quite a hard mask. We need to feather that. So I'll boost this all the way up to 100 
That's as far as I can go on the slider. If you'd like to go further, you can click on the number and drag it up, and then you can have a little bit more feathering. Let's push it to around 400. Now, as you can see, these adjustments have actually made this area a little bit more saturated. So I'm going to head back over to my color wheels adjustment, and I'm going to drop the global saturation here until it looks right. I think something around there. I might even drop the shadows saturation as well. One last thing I want to do here is just adjust the intensity of this brightness. So to do that, I'm going to add a glow effect and I'm just going to drop that onto this clip as well. Let's head over to the glow and I'm probably going to set that to around 50. And this is what it looks like before and after. So you see, we've just got a little bit more light intensity there. Again, we've saturated this now too much with the glow effect. So I'll come back here and I'll drop that just a little bit more. So let's have a look here at what these effects have done to brighten the sky. This is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after. Let's play that back so you can see what that looks like in action. And we have a nice little flash. You can repeat this process of adding light into the scene to add additional secondary flashes. When lightning strikes, the light bounces off different clouds, so creating these additional flashes really helps to make it look more realistic. You can also add as many secondary flashes as you need, but I'll just show you how to do one. So you can create new flashes by holding down Alt and duplicating this clip. I'll hit up to go to the end of that last flash. I'll move two frames forward using the arrow keys. I'll trim it using the Alt and square bracket shortcut, and then I'll set the duration to one frame. Now I'm going to copy the effects that we applied to this clip using Command C, and I'll paste the attributes using Command Shift B to copy those effects to this clip. So now we have that same sort of flash of light and I want to select the draw mask and I will come over here and select all of the points at the same time and I'm going to move that flash over towards the right. Then what I'm going to do is just change the shape slightly so it doesn't look exactly the same. I think something like that should do. You can repeat this process if you want to add additional lightning flashes. You can find a different lightning image so that it's not identical, or you can just copy and paste that lightning bolt and swap the scale value on the x-axis from 25 to minus 25. That will essentially flip the direction of the lightning bolt, and then we can reposition that so that it looks a little bit different to the one we had before. I'll hit done, and I'll copy the main clip using my shortcut to trim the clip again, and then I will set the duration to one frame, and I will copy and paste my attributes like I did before. Now I'll go and select my draw mask, select all of these points, and I will move it to around here. For this one, I might feather it a little bit more, and I might also bring this down so we get a little bit of spill onto the boat. You can see over here, we're getting some of that light on the water and on the boat. I'll add some secondary flashes, something like that. I'll copy and paste these effects again, and I'll just go ahead and change the mask slightly. I'll move it up to there. And on this one, I'll probably just move it to the far left of the screen. So let's play that back. And this is what it currently looks like. That looks pretty good. But in order to really sell this effect, you'll need to add some sound design. I've added two different sound effects for the lightning cracks and the thunder in here. I also added some sounds for the waves and the boat. Put that all together and this is the final result. And that is how you add lightning to your footage in Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I post new videos and I'll catch you in the next one.